Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield at the Mary Bryant Home for the Blind. Today, this home held its first ever Springfield Low Vision Awareness Day. Well, it gave us a chance to see some of the latest technology to help the visually impaired. It also gave us a chance to tour this place. With Jerry Curry inside the Mary Bryant home, about, you have a capacity here for 40 or 42, 42. 42 people mm -hmm. to live here. Right now, you have in the upper 30s. Right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. First thing they see when they come in, they each got their own post, their own post box. Yeah, like, don't an, they? like the old time post office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. So and that, they can identify it by the number of bumps that that is that delineates their post office. Their yeah, post the, office the boxes box. are uh, identified in braille, mm -hmm. and the braille and the large print. Then uh, resident or newer residents that are moving in that maybe lost their sight later in life that don't know braille. Uh, we we can just put raised dots mm -hmm. on their mailboxes, and they can find their way but I've got my secretary and my office manager here they can guide them as yeah, well they can take it this you have something very unusual here that is the only one downstate this guy you have a hidden, low vision I, store we have the only low vision store outside of Chicago amazing and uh, just the the on slew of phone calls from people wanting products to help mom uh, read the paper or mm -hmm. get dressed or apply makeup <laughs> talking watches is talk, what we were looking yeah. at here and, yeah. and there you're, you're looking at keyboards that have uh, special for special needs folks, uh, instruments that tell you what color clothes you're wearing. Um, look at over here. You've got you've got a whole selection of magnifiers, as well as special glasses. Talking clocks. As we move to our left, you've got talking clocks over here. If anybody needed a cane, there's your special canes there in the corner. A whole bunch of different phone selections. And we, uh, yeah, this button here, you, this phone, they could put a picture of their kids on it. And if they want to talk to Tommy, they just pick up the phone and talk to Tommy. Or <laughs> program they, those numbers in there, program huh? Program the, the special yeah. numbers in. Hey, show me that dollar bill indicator there. That's that was a, a really cool thing. Yeah, just um, when a blind person, they don't know if they're getting the correct change back when they they're giving a twenty and they're getting their change back. Mm -hmm. But this little thing they can stick in their pocket and. It'll identify that <laughs> Tells as a $1 what the bill, bill is, or $5 course. bill. Most of us would never think that that'd be a problem. But if, if you can't see what your dollar, my goodness, you give 10 and 20s away, and who, some people are not going to remind you that, hey, it would, only needed a one. Right. You know? Oh, goodness. Good. Well, this is, this is cool because you've gotten calls. You used to get calls from all over the country. Uh, uh, you know, where, where should I go for this or this or this? And you say, well, now you can just come to, come to the Mary Bryant home. Not all over the country, but uh, yeah. from surrounding communities. And yeah. we, people come from... Litchfield to Lincoln, Decatur, Quincy, Jackson, they'll come here now. Uh, they can do a hands-on, feel it, touch it, uh, see if it's going to work for them mm -hmm. instead of looking or having somebody, well, this, here's, one in a, here's one in a catalog, let's order that and try that. And if it doesn't work out, then they got to box it up and mm -hmm. send it back and that, that hassle. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a, uh, a, a two-edged sword for us. I don't know if that's the right word to use or not, but... Uh, it's getting the blind and visually impaired that are still independent living in their own house. It's getting them in our front door and we're, we're selling them products that we're making a little bit on. But our, yeah. our main objective is to get those people that are still independent become aware of us. Yeah. And uh, when the time comes, they say, you know, I'm tired of finding someone to take me to church or take me to the grocery store mm -hmm. or shovel my snow mm -hmm. or mow my yard. You can come here and they've, yeah. they've met a friend through us and and it, 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 it's worked for us. We've had residents yeah. move in just because they've purchased stuff through the store yeah. for a couple of years. Show us a typical room. Sure. Yeah. Well, Jerry, this is a, a typical apartment, studio apartment? This is a, one of our uh, two open rooms at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, we've kind of got it staged to give an idea, uh, let, let family members know uh, what their family member can do in here. You know, mm -hmm. it. Uh, uh, what a resident moves in can do whatever, whatever they, they can do whatever they want to do in this apartment. They can hang the pictures if they want pictures. They can uh, uh, not hang anything. But this we just got it staged just to show people that uh, mm -hmm. what's available to them. Each one comes. I, I find this interesting. This is probably an emergency call. In yeah, case we, we call it the garage door openers. But, Everybody. Uh, <laughs> 
But that, that'll, that'll page your nurse if they need assistance. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they've got everything they would need, ba they basically need. They've got a little kitchenette here with a freezer and a fridge and a, and a microwave. Or they could take meals in the, in the dining room. We've, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have great, three great chefs here, and we put on really good meals every day, mm -hmm. seven days a week. Uh, but they have their, like the kitchenette and the thermostats. Uh, uh, you know, the fee to move in, everything's included in your fee, except if you want a, your own private telephone. I have 26 phones throughout the building. They can mm -hmm. pick up phone call anywhere they want to. But if they want their own phone, they'd have to pay for that. Then I have a barber and a beautician that comes in monthly, mm -hmm. and they would pay that. But other than that, uh, mm -hmm. their meals, transportation, activities, heat, air, everything's included yeah. in their monthly yeah. rent. Excellent. Curtis Hayes, you're with a company called Freedom Scientific. That's right, Mike. And, and one of the specialties your company does is make products for the blind and visually impaired. It's exactly right. We're a software and hardware company devoted specifically to the services of the low vision and fully visually impaired. Now, you're in Springfield today mm -hmm. from Florida. From Florida. Our company is based in St. Petersburg. Today was kind of a special day here at Mary Bryant Home. They wanted to have a low vision awareness day. Exactly right. And so you brought some of your products mm -hmm. in to show, and you had a pretty good audience, didn't you? Yes, here? we did. We had almost 40 people today. That's fantastic. And most of them were visually impaired. Indeed. A significant portion as well as representatives here from state government and local agencies who assist these people mm -hmm. and provide funding and provide evaluation. So there's quite a lot to bear with, with this kind of channel, not just low vision users, but everyone up the ladder who recommends this equipment. Right. Okay. Now, I asked you to pull out a couple of the examples mm -hmm. that you showed people. Let's say that I have some vision but I can't see any detail. Mm -hmm. how, how do you magnify things? Well, low vision is something that affects quite a number of people. It's not just those who might have a, a more prescribed condition like macular degeneration or mm -hmm. diabetic retinopathy. It can include those who just have a little bit of lost vision. And, you know, those who may use bifocals and just have strain, this makes life easier. So if we think of something towards the higher end of low vision folks where they do really need assistance in order to access text, or bring it all the way down to someone who might just need a little bit, you've got a lot to offer. I'll start here with our Ruby, and this is our handheld video magnifier, and one of us, our smallest one, currently mm -hmm. one of the most popular ones on the market. And this has a four and a half inch screen, and it's full color, and what, it, as I'm going to show, this does magnification and color enhancement. One thing we talked about with trying to, to actually read, Everyone's very used to reading black text on a white background. Mm -hmm. Those with vision issues might find that a lot harder to do. They might do better with white text on a black background. And being able to standardize that and have some control over it gives them the independence and the power, really the flexibility to operate on their own terms. Mm -hmm. So our Ruby is pretty easy to work with. We have a power button, very, very narrow field to work with. So we have our magnification and color enhancement, magnification increase, and our freeze frame. Mm -hmm. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to use this flyer here, and again, we thank the Mary Bryant Home for all of their support. The Ruby works two ways. One, it can lay very easily on a surface, and as it comes up, it's currently, it remembers the last setting, so currently it is in a white text on mm -hmm. a black background. So I'm going to adjust that back to full color. Full color is very nice, of course, when you're working with text, but even better when you're working with photos sure. and you want a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. When we're working with text, of course, it's not just about that level, but we can get even closer. Mm -hmm. This goes uh, wow. a range between three and a half and 14 times. Mm. And you also have the ability to freeze frame. Now let's say that was a bit of information that I wanted to take with me, simply push a pause. Mm -hmm. Now I can take that same material mm -hmm. and bring it closer to my eye, mm -hmm. which that makes me. If you had to read paragraph by paragraph, mm -hmm. you could do that, magnify it, bring it up, and then put it back down and read, take another paragraph. You can. Huh? Uh, one of those, especially when you're reading paragraph by paragraph, the handle on the ruby folds out. And again, it has two very bright LED lights under here, so that's giving you a controlled reading environment. Mm -hmm. And acting much like a magnifying glass would, this allows you to follow along, mm -hmm. bring it higher, bring it closer to get more magnification, mm -hmm. and still have the exact same ways of doing your pausing. Now, for instance, if I wanted to take a picture of a phone number or something, I could put my finger under it, mm -hmm. simply pause, and now again, take that with me over to the phone and be able to dial mm. with two hands. Let, let me ask you to pretend. Yes, sir. Okay, let's say I'm, I'm grocery shopping mm -hmm. and, and I want to uh, look up on a shelf, okay? And the shelf is at about this level. Well, that's If you've got ideal Ruby way. with you, you can, you can actually get up there and take a picture. And that's an ideal way to do it. I, you can see I'm a big guy and I don't like crawling around <laughs> on the ground. So this makes it much easier that no matter where I'm at, I can get the camera close take a picture, and then bring it to my eyes. And once again, once I bring it close to my eye, I can still further enhance, whoops, I'm sorry. Let me, let's take that again. 
when I've taken my text and I've taken a freeze frame, mm -hmm. I can still magnify further from there. Oh, so even if it was something that was small and I got a yeah. poor picture of it, I can get That's in very wonderful. close. Now what's this other one? This is our Sapphire. And the Sapphire takes the same technology up to another level. Again, this had a four and a half inch screen. The Sapphire has a seven inch screen. Yeah. And it's built to be a little bit sturdier. And again, this is designed to, to glide very easily across what one is riding. Now let me show you first the Sapphire as it's closed. It comes in red, blue, mm -hmm. and gray. And these make it very easy to spot on a cluttered desk. Having something so sturdy, you have the screen and the camera protected and enclosed, so it travels very well. Mm -hmm. The camera, sorry, the screen flips around very easily. And as we turn the power on, it'll warm right up. And we use the exact same buttons that we used in the Ruby. Mm -hmm. Again, our square here to enhance our color and contrast, our freeze frame button, and the yellow would be our magnification increase. In this case, with the Sapphire, the magnification increase is a slider. And that sliding switch, as you simply stop sliding, mm -hmm. will magnify and increase. Mm -hmm. And you can slide that right over the surface. Exactly, and as you slide this over the surface, of course, it's going to continue working. Further nice color enhancement. Yeah, Seven inch display like makes it much easier to you read. You said some people can see white on black better, mm -hmm. and this just sort of flips it. Exactly, it inverses the color. What it does is actually pair it down to two colors, as opposed to a full color spectrum. Being able to, to compare it down to just black and white or mm -hmm. white and black means that you have a much higher level of contrast, much easier to get that information in a low vision situation. Ron Miller at the Mary Bryant home today, yet a pretty good crowd of folks who wanted to learn how to use this system called OpenBook. Mm -hmm, that's correct. And um, a, 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 this is a Perl. This is actually a, a reader, isn't it? This Perl system reads uh, what's on the printed page. Well, this is actually, the Perl is a, is a camera, and the camera will see what's on the printed page and send it to a software package we have called OpenBook. And OpenBook is just what it says. It, it, it opens up text to people that are blind. Mm -hmm. So using the Perl camera, I'm gonna see if our page is sort of squared away here. It is, it looks good. Great, the Perl camera, when I start this, will take a picture of that page, there it goes, and it'll take two or three seconds, oh, or less, <laughs> and it will actually provide this text for me, both as speech, you can kind of hear it in the background, right. and also in Braille, so the Braille display here is, is refreshing and doing its thing, and I can actually read down through here, and the speech is keeping up with me right now. Oh, okay. okay. So if you want to listen to it, it's reading the text to us right now. Exactly. It's also sending that text to your fingertips. Straight to my fingertips, Amazing. to the Braille display. Amazing. So we've got a multimodal approach. Not all blind people read Braille, those of us who do, really like having that text in black and white, if you will, mm -hmm. okay, in three dimensions in this case, because as, as you know, you're, you're a guy who deals with words and text and copy mm -hmm. a lot. If you've got it in front of you and you're physically reading it, you retain it much better than if you're just listening to it. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this, um, this, this is called, this is not, this is JAWS? Is that what this is called, this uh, Braille? This is actually called a focus, focus Braille display. It's the Focus 40 Blue. Blue oh, because it's Bluetooth, okay. it's connected mm -hmm. via Bluetooth. So I could actually walk away from my computer, go across mm -hmm. the room about 30 feet, and still be able to Adjust drive my computer, look at things, um, and be able to run the computer as if I'm sitting in front of it using the Braille Writer style keyboard. Remarkable. Uh, that, that says, my, that makes a capital letter, then I'm gonna write my name, A-L-L-A-N space, capital, Rupel, R-U-P-E-L. And then I'll start the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's the way the alphabet is done. Well, and, and Alan Rupel, we just did two things at once. What's that? We introduced you, and we got the chance to see the, how Braille is made. <laughs> That's right. It's easy. <laughs> it's right. Now, you are a, a vice president on the board yes, of directors yes, yes, of the I Mary am. Bryant Home. Yes, I'm happy to be on the board. And uh, back in your day, uh, Braille, this was, this was as high-tech as communication got oh, yes. for blind people, wasn't now, it? Now, let me point out, I graduated from the School for the Blind in Jacksonville mm -hmm. in 1950. I'm 80 years old. Oh. And uh, back in those days, we had Braille writers, and we, and we also used a slate and stylus. I have one here in my pouch I can mm -hmm. show you, but that's just a, another way of writing it, mm -hmm. but without a machine. Have you been attracted at all to this latest technology, which allows people that, that can't see to use computers? Have you used any of them? I have a computer. My, my computer at yeah. home has a program that reads everything on the screen and uh, tells it to me. And then I have another program. I have a laptop scanner. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I'll scan a type sheet of paper and it'll verbally read that to me mm -hmm. also. It's remarkable, isn't it? It is excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And you must think that the Mary Bryant home is pretty special because you have been involved with it for some time. Oh, indeed, I have, yes. I've been on the board probably eight or ten years now. Yeah. yeah. I lost track. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, thanks for showing us this. It's, it's interesting to see what, what used to be used, you know, because we're seeing all the new stuff today, too. Well, this, this, I believe we still need to teach Braille in the school. This, for instance, I keep my checkbook this way. I mm -hmm. do all my business this way, and it's really essential. Dan Thompson, you're visiting from Jacksonville. Yes. Here at the Mary Bryant home. Yes. And uh, you yourself are a blind man, right? You, you And you've been at the Jacksonville School for the Visually Impaired for a long time. Yep, since 1991, and I went to school there from 59 to 72. Good education, wasn't it? Excellent. Yeah, and you're, are you still the librarian over there? Well, not librarian, I'm the, uh, I take care of the historical museum. Oh, that's right, the yes. curator of the museum. Yes. Mm -hmm. And are you retired now? Yeah, I retired in May, 2011. So with all that spare time on your hands, now you're <laughs> over here doing some volunteer work, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, <that's> okay. Right. <laughs> well, listen, one of the things that you have become very good at is learning how to use a computer. And people that are watching this who have their vision might say, how in the heck can you use a computer if you can't see the monitor? Mm -hmm. You're going to show us, aren't you? Yes. Okay. What I asked you to do for us first, Dan, is to, is to uh, create a document. All right. I'm going to press the Start menu. We're using Windows XP and JAWS Access. Job Access for Windows is called JAWS. So I'm going to go ahead and... Start menu Start to navigate. Button. Press up or down arrow. Press R. Leaving menu. Run dialog. Type the name. I'm going to type in WordPad. Double O R D P A D. Enter. Desktop. Folder view. List view. Internet Explorer. 5 of 13. To move to the. I'm going to tell it to be quiet. I press the control key to mute it. I'm now on an empty blank document. Blank. Mm -hmm. Nothing there. So if I type in. H I space. M was A A E R S B T A N B T A O F E O N period. And you notice when I touched the capital letters, the voice got higher. So now I have a right. blank. Now I have a document. And I can read that document by pressing insert up arrow. That one line. Hi, my name is Dan Thompson. I'll be doggone. That's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're you're ready to write either a letter or create any kind of yes. a, any kind of a document you'd want to yeah. right now, and yeah. then print it out just like you would on any other computer. Yeah. And and of course the monitor here that we look at that's strictly for our benefit, the benefit of the people who have vision. It doesn't mean a thing to you, does it? Right. You're listening. Right. You're using your ears. Okay. Right. Now another thing you can do with this computer, you can do almost anything that a sighted person I can, can do. do. Everything. Um, yeah. Let's let's uh, search search for something on Google. All right. I will close this doc this window first here. Hold that for WordPad dialog. It's asking me if I'm going to save it. I say no. N. Okay. Yeah, no window is active. Good. I go to the desktop with start button and letter M. Windows M. Desktop. And I press I for internet. I. It might already be there. Internet Explorer 5 yes. of 13. Mm -hmm. So I press enter on that. Enter. New tab page. Windows Internet Explorer. Okay. There's Google. Google. Search yeah. it. So I'm gonna, it already puts me in the search box. Search at HTTP. And I'm going to type in Mary Bryant Home. Google search. All right, button. let's go. Let's Hold visit on. their website. And I like L. to check and see if I did it right. So I'm going to check this. Edit Mary Bryant Home. Oh, that's not good. Hold on, let's go back and do D it again. A B A B M. Search edit Mary Bryant Home in Springfield Hill. All right, I press enter on that. Mm -hmm. Enter. Mary Bryant Home in Springfield Hill dash Google search. Mary so I have, a, I have it up there, and now I'm going to go and look at the home page by going to my favorites. Oh, the menu, favorites, radio station guide. Oh, where, where we are you? Welcome to the Mary Bryant Home for the... I can press enter on it. Enter, mm -hmm. leaving menu. And there welcome it is. To the Mary there Bryant it is. Home sure for enough. The blind I will arrow down. Graphic header blank. Link graphic home link. Link graphic site map link. That's link link. graphic about us link. We'll go to about us. <laughs> about us, okay. Yes. Enter about us link visited link graphic. <laughs> about us link visited link graphic. Page at quote. Now, I can arrow down and read. History of the Mary Bryant home. History of the Mary Bryant home. I can go by yeah. one word. Of history of the Mary Bryant home. Fantastic. Now, I can have it read continuously yeah. and we get a little bit overbearing with all the talking. but That's right. And he gets a little boring, you know. <laughs> yeah, he does. Well, Dan, that's that's terrific. Thank you so much for yes. showing us that. And it opened up your world a little bit, didn't it? It sure did. It, uh, without technology, I wouldn't uh, have the job I had and, and be able to access a lot of things that are on the Internet and 
be employable today, you, you need to have technology in your life yeah. as, a, as a special needs individual or a visually yeah. impaired person thank to you, be Dan. successful. Yeah, thank you. Well, Jerry Curry, uh, amid all of this, the, these some 40-some individuals who live here, um, this Mary Bryant home is named after a woman who we don't know much about. We, there are no photographs of Mary Bryant. Um, we know that she went to Illinois School for the Visually Impaired in Jacksonville, um, and that she was a, a, a really a treasured resident there, um, and that she, she apparently saved some lives in a fire that occurred there one time. But we don't know much about her, and we don't have any pictures of her, but we do know that she led a frugal life and that she left her money to this cause, to build a, a home for the blind. Right. What a, uh, what a great her, lady. Her name appears in print three times. Uh, once at, when she graduated from ISVI, the Illinois School for the Visually Impaired in Jacksonville, um, when she died, and in between the time, uh, she was credited for saving the lives of some of the students mm -hmm. uh, when one of the dormitories at the school caught on fire. Mm -hmm. So three times in her life, she appeared uh, in, in print. Uh, what's amazing is that uh, um, you know, the, the story, you know, she was born in 1854 in Chicago and at the age of nine was struck with a disease that she lost her eyesight. Now she, she could tell if the lights were on or if it was daylight or dark. Mm -hmm. uh, she had that kind of, that vision, but um, so upon graduation from Jacksonville, uh, or while, I'm sorry, while she was a student, both of her parents passed away. Mm -hmm. So upon graduation, she didn't have a home to go back to not knowing what to do, uh, approached the superintendent of the school and said, you know, I need help. And uh, the superintendent hired Mary as a dorm mother to help the new students coming into the school to help them get around the campus, get around the classrooms mm -hmm. and things like that. That's an occupation that she held for the next 54 years. Really? And um, we know that she received her last, her final pay raise in 1912. And uh, she was given a, uh, a raise of, well, she made $120 a year for the nine-month school year. Mm -hmm. So the three months that school was out for summer, they don't know where she lived, where she made her money, mm -hmm. or what she did. But upon her death in 1925, she left a bank account at the Elliott State Bank of a little over $3,500 with, oh, with a note challenging the Alumni Association of the school to take this money fundraise on it, to build on it, and to build a home for blind women, the mm -hmm. home that she never had. You know, and that's what makes this, these documents so precious, is that you have so little of Mary Bryant, Correct. that what you do have is, is so important. These are the papers that you're talking about when she was talking about her, her last, uh, her, her, the last remaining money that she had when she died, uh, and, and you still do have those intact, and so that's pretty precious, isn't it? We, yeah. we have her, a couple of her bank statements, we have her her pocket watch, uh, we have her copy of her, her safety deposit box up here. Why don't you bring that down for us, if you would? Okay, that, that came out of the bank, huh? This came okay. out, of the, out of the bank. <laughs> and the, the watch was probably in there, or, or, right. or not. Right, but was, there's so, her yeah, they, Mary Bryant. Uh-huh, and you could see that she had to run her fingers over that. That's how she She knew that knew was, her, was hers, her box. Because yeah, that's indented there. But that's this is nice. that's all we that's all we have of Mary Bryant. Yeah. Plus, what you have is she she bequeathed to you uh, not only these memories but also that that start that seed money. Correct. And and then she got the effort going to uh, for the community to raise money. Now, this is imp this is important too because this community effort, this Mary Bryant home, has never received any public money to stay in existence, has it? Yeah, we're in our sixty sixth year and uh, never taken an any uh, state or federal funding. Mm -hmm. It's all, all the money we get is from the rent from our residents uh, and donations from mm -hmm. the community. It's remarkable. It is remarkable. Now this is, this is cool. Helen Keller, of course, everybody knows her as the, uh, the, the probably the most famous person who was uh, visually impaired in the country. In 1952 wrote to this home this wonderful letter of commendation. And, I don't know if you can boil it down for us, but in her poetic way, has said thank you for your efforts on the parts of on the part of blind people. Correct. Uh, this is is quite a treasure, and uh, you know I've been involved with the home for a number of years, <clears throat> and I always thought uh, Helen's signature was fading, and uh, I was found out here uh, a year or so ago that 
Helen Keller only signed her name in pencil. Uh, in her time, they had the, the dip the ink wells mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Well, if she ran her finger over it, she would smear the ink on mm -hmm. her hands and ruin documents and things like that. So she only, she always uh, even until she died, only signed her name in pencil. And, and so most of her signatures are disappearing. I mean, they're not indelible. Well, the, yeah. um, the pencil will stay longer than ink. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Excellent. But uh, you know, as far as Helen Keller, uh, her... Uh, museum pieces were uh, her documentation of her life was all stored in uh, mm -hmm. in New York in the in the towers and uh, her majority of her stuff was destroyed Is that right? during 9/11. So we are honored to and blessed to you have are. a piece of her very fortunate from her. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first. This was the first Mary Bryant home built on South Fourth Street. Uh, it was an already existing structure when when you all acquired it. It's I still there. It's still there today. Still there, and and we're there for three years until this one, and this is the uh, on, uh, on East Lawrence, 107 East Lawrence. That building's still there too, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's lost the front porch. It doesn't have the front mm -hmm. porch attachment anymore. And then before you moved here in 1983, you were at, uh, what's that, South 5th Street? South 5th, 5th and South Allen 5th Street. Street. Yeah. And this is the home that most people remember. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you have uh, 40 to 50,000 cars a day going up and down 5th and 6th Street, Everyone always remembers the old Mary Bryant home. Mm -hmm. um, I was just six, eight months ago, a lady called up and wanted to volunteer. And uh, she called and says, now, where are you? And I said, well, we're at Stanton. I said, where are you at? She goes, I'm at Fifth and Allen Street. <laughs> where, said, I'm where you're supposed yeah, to be, right? Yeah, I said, we haven't been there since 1983. <laughs> so people still remember that as the Mary yeah. Bryant home. Yeah. But um, uh, due to safety reasons, uh, fire exits and lack of sprinkler systems, yeah. Uh, we were pretty much forced to move from that building, and uh, uh, fortunately at the time we were left uh, a rather large estate, which enabled us to purchase the property that we're on and uh, to help get the building yeah. Yeah. Uh, constructed. This modern facility is a whole lot better. Uh, yeah. No stairs. Uh, yeah. All the doors are in uh, Braille or large print. <clears throat> the signage is in Braille, large print. Um, it, it just It's uh, easy to maneuver. Uh, we always joke with the new residents uh, when they walk by the administration offices at least three times. We know they're lost because the building's a big yeah. circle. So, yeah. uh, uh, but it's it's easy to get around and easy to uh, yeah. for the, the newer residents. The Mary Bryant home is in the middle of a capital campaign. They need to raise two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to replace the boiler, the air conditioning system, and the thermostat system. That's the next hurdle. With another Illinois story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.